Hello everyone, welcome to Crafty Garden. My name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our cat. The dogs are in the house, the cat's always in the house, so you probably hear um, my husky prancing around. <laughs> um, and <laughs> he's, he's just right here. Um, so today is Monday, January 21st, and it's Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and I am enjoying the day off um, today. So I thought I would start this episode with a quote, and it's a quote that I've um, quoted <laughs> before on this channel, but um, it's worth repeating, and it's something to um, it's something that I think um, personally I need to keep in mind and remember. Um, it's it's um, it's a simple message, but it's powerful, I think. And uh, so Martin Luther King Jr. said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. So that's my quote for today um, in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, spread a little bit of love and, um, yeah, drive out hate with love and not more hate. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, I, yeah, so today is a day off for me, which is so wonderful because, um, I honestly, uh, I feel like my weekends are gone in such a flash and I thought I would take, you know, a, maybe do a short episode today and talk about some of the things that I've been working on. Um, I find it really hard to record like I used to and so maybe that's just what needs to change. I just need to do shorter, more frequent updates. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to guarantee that, but that seems like it would be um, a solution is to do shorter episodes, um, maybe like quick updates and things like that. So with that, I want to jump into it. And uh, yeah, I mentioned a couple of things. Um, it is January and I just celebrated my 29th birthday. <laughs> it's my last birthday as a 20 something. Um, and that was earlier in January that, um, I celebrated. Um, and I actually woke up to a snow day. It was, um, I got a, uh, phone call saying that school was closed for a snow day and it was like, happy birthday to me. <laughs> so I got to enjoy the day and just relax. And, um, it was really, really nice. But um, anyway, so yeah, I have a photo of my husband got us, uh, got cupcakes for us. I'd say me, but it's for him too. Um, and uh, I forgot to take a picture of how cute they were beforehand and suddenly realized that halfway, oh, more than halfway eaten, I had eaten almost all of my cupcake and then I took a picture of it. So I'll insert that. Um... <laughs> I don't know why, but I will. So yeah, I have a few things to talk about today, and I'm going to start with finished objects. Um, my husband's outside plowing right now because there's oh, there's like a foot and a half of snow out there right now, so he's he's uh, doing a whole bunch of plowing, and I'm really thankful for that, but that's why I keep looking back and forth because he might pop in. Um, so... Uh, yeah, I have some finished objects to talk about, and one of them is my hinterland dress. And I'm going to insert the photos that I took, and I've already shown on Instagram, but if you don't follow me on Instagram, then, um, yeah, you'll see them. Um, i probably put them at the beginning of the episode, and I'm going to try to stand up. I don't have a lot of room. Um, but this is my hinterland dress. I really don't have a lot of room. This is my hinterland dress. It has five buttons. <laughs> I put an extra button down the front placket because I am, if I can, here I'll sit on my knees. <laughs> um, I put extra button on the front placket because I am um, a little busty and I tend to get gaping um, right around this area so I put an extra button there and I think that was a really good decision. Um, yeah, I made I graded between three sizes, a smaller size at the shoulder, a larger size at the bust, and then down to um, like two sizes down for the hips. So um, I'm not going to get into all the details because 
Like I said, I'm going to try and keep um, these episodes a little bit shorter. Let's see if I can move this back a little bit and then show you the bow in the back and my pockets. And I've been wearing this to school. I guess I try and show you the hem. Stand up on my chair. Um, yeah, I love it. I um, it's it's yarn dyed. Uh, it's yarn dyed plaid. So that means that the uh, the yarn was woven. The, these colors were woven into the fabric versus being printed on top. Um, it's a stash fabric that I bought from a store closing, and it's really nice. It's a purple. I think it really suits me. Um, I really like it, and I'm so happy that I decided to make this. I made it on, I started, I made almost all of it during my, like, Christmas break. Um, so, yeah. So this is a finished object, and it felt a little bit like a birthday dress, too. Um, and I wear it to work, and the pockets are so perfect because I can put my um, my classroom keys in there, and um, yeah. So I would actually like to make another one at some point, but I'm not rushing it. Um, and I don't know if I have fabric in my stash to make another one right now that I really want to use. I have some that I could use, but it's a black and white um, uh, plaid. It's a uh, checkered, and I my intention was to make pajamas with that, um, and I I'm not sure that I'm ready to give up that that desire. So, so yeah, so that's it for well no that's not it for sewing. Um, this is sewing and weaving. So I wove this um, fabric. It's leftover um, yarn from my Etsy shop that I used to have, and I say used to have because I'm not doing anything with it. Um, right now but this was brown eyed girl the purple was my colorway called brown eyed girl I made little shorty socks that I had a lot of leftovers from and it's self striping um, it's purple with browns and blues and pinks and um, it's just gorgeous it really is gorgeous and then a little mint mint mini that I had um, you can see the bottom. I stopped weaving the pattern, so the back side is just plain tabby weave. And you can see where the warp threads, I had white, mint, and purple in the warp. Um, yeah, and on this side I have a pattern, and this was my first pattern, my first time using um, my pickup sticks uh, on my Rigid Heddle Loom to make a um, to make a uh, pattern and I think it's kind of like a it's a warp and weft float I think I did talk about it on an old episode because this sat on my loom for a very very long time um, so yeah I just made this really really quick project bag just some boring white lining in there it's pretty small I think it's almost too small to use for socks even a sock project bag um, so I might have to use it for something more like, I don't know, school. Um, I don't, I don't really know. And but it it came out so so well. And I did a little matching purple zipper. So yeah, just a little simple um, project bag or stationary bag. I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it's really cute. So that's uh, let's see, that's sewing. I did do some more weaving. I started a new project and I thought that this was going to be a rug but I am I'm still very much a noob when it comes to weaving and fabric can change so much when you take it off the loom and that's exactly what happened to this it shrank a lot and so it turned into this square I don't even think I talked about this on the channel. I think I only talked about it in like my Instagram stories. Um, but I did braid a couple of the, the pieces. I, I don't, I'm not totally sold that I'm going to braid them, but I don't really know what to do with it because it's so much smaller than it was my intention. 
was for it to be like a little throw rug or something, which I don't know why that, like now it seems absurd, but um, yeah, I spun all of this uh, yarn. The warp thread was a mix of Romney, Shetland, guard hairs, and um, mohair. Okay, I had to pause because my husband came in. He's uh, getting in the shower to warm up and, um, yeah, <laughs> from being out there in the cold plowing. Anyways, um, I thought I'd grab Tux up as he walked by and force him to snuggle <laughs> and say hi. It's been a long time since he said hi. I know, he wants to go because he wants me to feed him early, but I thought I had to show him off because he's so cute. All right. Okay, so back to what I was talking about. I wove this. It's, uh, it didn't turn out the way I intended it to. And yeah, I told you what the warp was made out of. Um, the Shetland, or not the Shetland, yes, the Shetland guard hairs. I pulled out all of the guard hairs from this fleece. Um, it's the Kelsey fleece. And if you've been following my fleece to FO journeys, um, and I pulled out all the guard hairs and actually blended them with mohair and Romney uh, on my drum carter and then spun it. It's a two ply. The, uh, the guard hairs, I think in particular, made it very difficult to weave this. <laughs> um, they were incredibly sticky and um, yeah, that's not something I thought of beforehand, which seems obvious now that it would do that. But anyways, I really love how it came out. And um, at first I was very disappointed that it wasn't what I wanted it to be, but um, it grew on me. <laughs> it's become a cat blanket. Um, Tux loves to lay on this, but I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I was thinking I could uh, turn it into some kind of like wall hanging. Um, maybe I could do some embroidery over it and um, trim up the fringe and braid it or just do something cute and turn it from something, you know, it's not what I wanted it to be, but maybe um, I should embrace that and, you know, turn it into uh, maybe see what it wants to become or something like that. <laughs> so, but yeah, I do, I do love it. I just, I hate that it's... Um, it's not as long, it's not as big as I wanted it to be. It really shrank up once I got it off the loom. Um, so yeah, that's it for weaving, I believe. That's, yeah, that's all the weaving I've done. Um, I So I have a finished knitting, uh, no, I have two sorted, well, I have one and an almost finished knitting object. Um, my first is the socks that I just finished. Um, these are Shetland mohair socks that um, I spun. The uh, There's two fibers in here. There's the Shetland is from uh, Into the World. It was a club colorway um, and it was 2017 that I had gotten that that club colorway. I think it was it was the November club colorway and um, so I have had that in the stash for quite some time. Um, I kind of sat unloved for a while, but uh, I decided to, well, I wanted to spin up some mohair that I had. It was a hand combed, I hand combed some purple and mo dyed mo adult mohair and some white kid mohair. Um, I combed that and blended it together. And I really wanted to spin that, and I think I started spinning it on a drop spindle, and then decided to uh, take that off, put it on my wheel, finish spinning it on my wheel. And then the idea came to um, put, you know, use it in socks. So I did. I knit, I spun one strand of just mohair, and then I spun, that was about 50 grams of mohair, and then I spun 100 grams of the Shetland, um, and then I three plied it with a cake. So I used both ends of the cake, the ball, and then I used the bobbin um, of the, the mohair bobbin. So it's a traditional three ply with one strand of mohair and two of Shetland. Um, 
it makes the the Shetland makes these really really fuzzy. I can bring them up close and show you. Um, it's hard to see the fuzz, but these are super fuzzy, and it's like a purple halo that that is all over the the socks. Um, it makes them really warm, extremely warm. And I was gonna wear these all day yesterday, but actually it was they were almost too warm just to wear around. Um, I think these are really gonna be better for like uh, actually practical use, like wearing them out. Um, in the snow, going for a walk, or um, yeah, if I think I'm going to be outside for a while, these would be better to wear. Um, they are worsted weight socks, so uh, they are thicker, which makes them perfect for wearing in my boots, like my L.L. Bean boots, um, and I really, really, I'm so happy with them. I actually want to spin another three-ply um, with mohair and I have some more mohair that I've spun that I'll show shortly. So yeah, um, pretty basic sock. It's a vanilla sock. I did do um, something funny with the ribbing at the top. I created this kind of V at the back. Um, I don't know what doesn't matter which one I show but if I move these you can see that there's kind of a V shape at the back where the ribbing on the back of the sock is longer than the front and I just did that for fun and I thought it might add some more stretch to the back of the leg or maybe it would just look cute I don't know um, and I like it I like it it uh, it didn't it's not as striking I think as I wanted it to be but it's still practical they fit really well I can wear them over top of my jeans um, and I like to do that and uh, so they're quite long. I did force myself to knit them um, so that they were longer. So that's it for my socks. Um, I think, I can't remember if this is my third pair of finished hand spun socks. I feel like this is my third pair, um, unless I'm forgetting a pair. I have a pair that I haven't finished yet, um, and that would be for my cats playing with a cat toy. Um, so that's it for my socks. I'll put them back here actually. And I was, uh, I had them in this cute little bag I showed last time. Um, so the other almost finished object is this hat. And this is, I got the pattern, the Tilda, the Tilda hat, which is a free pattern. And it's free on Ravelry, T-I-I-L-D-A hat. Um, it is mostly finished. It needs a pom-pom. Um, and I have this extra, um, yarn that I, I guess I can use to help attach the pom-pom. I feel like I am not very good at attaching pom-poms. Um, <laughs> they never are very stable, and I feel like there's got to be some secret to adhering pom-poms cleverly to a hat so that it doesn't want to wobble and like flip-flop. I want it to be very secure and um, I don't know, any tips out there for people who make hats and cute pom-poms? Um, this hat is, is tight and I had to extend the pattern. I knit an extra repeat of the cables um, so that it would fit over my ears because um, it was going to be too short. I do have quite a large head. <laughs> I'm not going to try it on because I don't want to mess up my hair. Um, I do have a little clip in. I just don't feel like um, I did put some effort into trying to tame this mess that is my hair. But <laughs> So I'm not going to try it on. Um, but maybe after I put the pom-pom on it, I'll take some photos and show it off later. It's this really beautiful, so the yarn is um, naturally dyed. It's indigo, and it's from Wing and a Prayer Farm. Um, this is Wilbur and Fluffhead, and she's not selling this this year. Maybe it will be back next year. Um, and uh, So I was actually going to buy some more of this and maybe do some color work with it, if I could get another color. 
in this same yarn, but like I said, she didn't do it this year, and um, I guess there was something something to do with the alpaca. But I decided to make this hat, so I just need a pom pom on it, and I'm gonna block it first. I'm hoping it might actually lengthen a little bit, um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, so yeah, Wing and a Prayer Farm. This is Wilbur and Fluffhead yarn. It's so soft. I love it. It's Cormo and Alpaca. Um, and um, the uh, it was naturally dyed with indigo. And it creates this um, kind of a mint color, really. <laughs> um, very beautiful. Um, so that's all I have for knitting. I did do a teeny bit of crocheting. It's just this border on my great granny square blanket. Um, I still haven't finished it. I really want to finish it. I really want to put a scalloped border on it and finish it, but um, I I can't rush it because I, I just need to do what, <laughs> what I want to do it right. And um, as much as I want to finish it, I want to make sure that I you take my time with it and I'm happy with the end result so I was going to put this newly spun yarn in it so I guess I could segue into spinning um, and I have a bit of spinning to talk about so I did spin this um, yarn and I, that's why it's uh, you can see that I've um, wound some yarn around the outside because I did try putting it in my great granny square blanket but decided that I didn't like this color placement where I was going to put it. Um, so that's why I added this color. And the surprising thing is that I had this hand spun yarn in my stash forever, not wanting to put it in this thinking that I didn't like the colors. And then I'm crocheting it and I'm like, I love these colors so much. What was I thinking? They're really beautiful. So anyways, I, I had spun this. This is um, a mix of hand dyed merino that I dyed, Shetland, the purple and green Shetland from two, from a fleece that I have and um, I dyed. So there's green in here, um, sh green Shetland in here, purple Shetland in here. And then the blue is the merino. And then there's also white Romney that I blended in. So it's Merino, Romney, Shetland, and I'm pretty sure I didn't put any mohair in here. I think it's just the three. Um, so yeah, it's really beautiful. I love how the, the green and the purple are kind of, um, like when you look from far away, they're really more subtle and it comes off as more blue, but when you look closely, you can really pick out the different colors. Um, it has sort of a, I don't know, I don't want to say mermaid, like a water color effect. Um, yeah, so I think I will do something with it. I might put it in my green, my great granny square, but maybe just not right right now. I might save it for later after I put another color in, or I might decide to do something completely different with it. I really don't know, but I did spin this, and I did, yeah, I drum carded all the fibers together on my drum carder. Um, and I have photos of the bats, I think. Maybe not great photos, but... So that's some spinning that I did. I have another finished spin, which is this. Um, this is just mohair. This is 100% mohair that I purchased locally. And I'm spinning, I did spin this on my new Bosworth spindle that I got at this most recent Rhinebeck. Um, and I talked about it on the last episode. This is Picasso wood, which is actually a flooring wood. Um, and I do really, really love this spindle. I think it's my favorite spindle right now. Um, and so yeah, this is just 100% mohair. And I think I'm going to use this to spin another pair of mohair wool mix um, socks, very similar to the ones I just finished. Um, I just haven't decided what fiber to go along with it. Or I even considered dyeing this. So I don't know if I want to leave it the creamy white color. It has a beautiful luster. Or if I want to dye it. 
I kind I'm very I'm really leaning towards leaving it white and then it would create um, like a marled effect in the finished yarn whatever I spin with it so yeah that's one finished spin the um, let's see another thing I finished spinning I half spun um, <laughs> so to explain that I have to show you this this is some mill ends that I purchased from Green Mountain Spinnery. I went down to their store. Um, it was quite a while ago, um, back in the summer or something. Um, and I purchased these cones that were really cheap, but they're mill ends, which means that um, this whole cone isn't one length, um, one unbroken length. There are a bunch of broken lengths all put on a cone. So what I did was I actually just knotted. I here's some that I didn't finish spinning. I just knotted together when I came. So I wound it into a cake, and then when I come to an end, I would just knot it pretty carelessly, um, not any special knot or anything. I would just knot it, and then wound it into this cake. And um, then I plied from the cake um, to for a two ply. So then that's what this yarn is, and I have to bring it in close. I did two ply it together. Um, there are knots in here, and then I over dyed it. I first I dyed it gold, and then I over dyed it with this green that I'm really trying to show you. It's a really dark olive green. Um, I really like the olive. So, anyways, this isn't the uh, the nicest yarn because of the knots, um, but. I was thinking it would be great to weave with, and wherever there's a knot, I can just cut that area and then weave in. Or if I do knit with it, same thing. I can just cut where the knot is and then weave in a tail. It's not like there's a hundred knots in here. There's probably four or five. Um, so it's really not that bad. And I could make something pretty nice. Um, and I got this fiber for way cheaper than it would have cost if it was uh, unbroken. So yeah, it was pretty pretty good deal. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I wish it would the color would show up, but yeah. So that's another finished spin. Um, the last spinning thing that I have to talk about is this, and I just finished spinning this today, and in a way I finished spinning it. So I decided to only spin half of it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and ply it. Um, here's the other half of it. So this is Shetland fiber. This is Layla um, from the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival last year. I purchased at the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. And um, the sheep's name was Layla. Um, it's kind of a taupe light brown color. The singles are um, relatively fine. It's going to be a two-ply fingering weight, um, and this spun like a dream. It was really, really nice to spin. Um, this fiber I love. This is probably um, my favorite. The feel of this fiber is my favorite. I think my favorite color is my Moritz Shetland fleece out of my Shetland fleeces because um, I love that chocolatey brown color. But this fleece was my favorite in that it is buttery soft. Um, there's lanolin left in here and it's silky buttery soft. It's not sticky in any way. It smells really, really lovely. The, the fleece was very clean to start with um, and it spins. It just wants to spin for you. Um, so this is really, really enjoyable spin. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to apply this. It's about 50 grams, and then this is about 50 grams, or a little over. Um, so I think I'm just going to do two smaller skeins instead of spinning it all together for one, um, like, 110 gram skein. I thought I would just split it up because my ultimate goal for um, all of my Shetland is to knit a all over color work sweater or cardigan and um, 
since it's going to be color work, I'm going to be breaking the yarn anyways, so um, I don't think it's necessary to have one very long um, length of yarn. I think, yeah, it's just, it'll be nicer to do, break up the spinning into like 50 grams and have little 50 gram skeins or hanks. So I think I'm going to apply this and then I'll spin the rest of this and then I will apply that, um, yeah, later. So that's, that's it for spinning, but I have done some more fiber prep and some more Shetland fiber prep. Um, I almost forgot to show you this. I um, wanted to show the little card, my index card that I made for this spin. Um, so it just has Layla's Shetland Fleece as the title, the fiber I've already told you. It's a two-ply fingering weight. Um, I only have the Lindrum double treadle right now for a wheel. The ratio is 15 to 1. And then just my notes are that I um, combed it on my Valkyrie Extra Fine Combs. And then as I continue spinning, I'll put more information on here. Um, I need to add that I'm doing a short backward draw um, for this spin. Um, I have noticed that I tend to do um, a short backward draw more than I do um, a short forward draw. And I like to try and get more um, twist into the fiber um, so that it will be a lighter airier uh, yarn than a heavy dense yarn. And part of that is too because I want this to be for color work. So I want it to be um, a little more wool and spun. But that was a little bitty sample that I made up at the beginning of the spin just to test if I was going to like um, that ratio and what the yarn looked like. So this isn't the most accurate sample because I did, I think I didn't spin, oops, <laughs> I didn't spin this quite the way that, um, because at the beginning when you're sampling, um, I think I changed up the way I was spinning after I took this off and uh, tried to make it a little bit more airier. So this might be a little bit more dense than the yarn that I actually created, but I use this as kind of a gauge to see that I'm making sure that I'm spinning the same thickness. Um, so that usually hangs on my wheel. I, I would have this just wrapped around um, the little threading hook on my wheel. So yeah, that's it for my card. This is my index box. I have shown this on old videos where I uh, keep my spins in here and I have information on the ratios for my whirls um, and there's a little protractor. I, sh I really should use a better protractor than this. Um, I should have a nicer, <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have a nicer um, clear one <laughs> um, that I have in here but oh well. Okay, so I was going to show you, um, I'm getting like a whole bunch of stuff. This is like all the mess that I have over here. Um, I have, I wanted to show you the other Shetland fiber that I have started processing. Um, so I put it in my new basket. I love these baskets and I have one other one. They, uh, they have a pink and green one that's more circular and I have been eyeing this style forever. Um, they are baskets that are woven in, I forget which part of Africa it is, but the uh, money, you know, by purchasing it you are helping support um, a person, the person who, who made this basket and um, helping create a better life for them. So um, I don't feel too guilty about splurging on this basket. I love the colors. Um, it has pink in it <laughs> again, but um, it's also got the lime green. There's some purple in here. Um, I like the natural color in it too. Um, but really I wanted this style where it has the higher sides and the bigger um, handles so that I can actually put it over my arm. So yeah, I have some Shetland fiber in here that I'll show you. 
I have, um, this is that Moret Shetland fleece that I was just talking about. So I wish I knew the name of this uh, sheep that this came from, but I don't. Um, this is, I did email the person and she didn't know either. It was her daughter's um, sheep, sort of. Um, and uh, her daughter was like five years old, so she emailed me back um, uh, for her daughter. <laughs> Silly. It's been a while since I emailed her, and I meant to e email her back and then say, um, you know, something in return about, um, in response to what she said, but I never did, and I feel a little bit guilty about that, but, um, yeah, so this is my favorite color, I think, is, and it's the same, the same Shetland, um, fiber that's in my, um, Dom Yakalopa that I showed on the last episode, the cardigan that I'm going to steek. Um, so I did do a little bit of combing for this. And I combed, um, I think at least 100 grams of Kelsey's fleece, which is the third Shetland fleece that I have. So I just have the three Shetland fleeces. I have Layla, Kelsey, and then the Moret fleece. And I really want to get a dark brown or black fleece. Um, so I'm going to keep my eye out on that. I would really like to have a gray a dark gray or gray, silvery gray, a black. Um, I have a little bit of walnut brown that's darker than this from Layla. And then I have Layla's color and I have this color and the chocolate color. And I really wanted to have um, a whole range of, I think all 12 colors might be a little too much, but a lot of the fleeces have multiple colors in them. So sometimes I'm I'm like getting um, two colors, two or three colors out of one fleece. Um, and that's actually the case for this too, because this is the light. I tried to pull out the lightest fiber from this fleece, and that's what this is. And then I have some more that's kind of medium from Layla and more some of it that's darker. Um, so I pulled out, tried to go for like kind of the whitest. This is kind of an oatmeal porridge off-white. It has little bits of brown in it. Um, and I think I have over 100 grams. And I think I'm going to do the same thing I did for, did I, where did I put it? Oh, right here. I think I'm going to do the same thing. I think I'm just going to create um, 50 gram skeins or hanks of, um, of the Shetland to knit color work with. Um, and I've been waiting to do this to actually start spinning it because I was thinking like I wanted to have all the fiber at once. I wanted to have all of the colors and everything prepped and everything combed and ready to go. And then I would spin it all at one time um, because I felt like that would make it the most consistent and all of my, my spinning would be more consistent. But I don't know. I feel like that might never happen if I wait for that. So maybe it's better to just start it as, I, as I'm as i doing it, um, spin it, and then I will prep and spin and prep and spin, and then maybe it won't seem like such a daunting task, you know, um, if I just waited to spin it all at once. So yeah, so I'm going to spin this after I finish this color. I'm going to spin this up and... Yeah, it's just going to make something eventually, something, some kind of beautiful Shetland color work garment. So that's all of the Shetland fiber prep. I have one more fiber prep that I did. It's in this bag. <clears throat> this is my Rommeldale. This is from my Rommeldale fleece. And um, I drum carded this fiber. It's um, kind of a gray-brown fiber. I showed it off on my last episode and um, I drum carded it. I learned after the fact that um, although I felt like I could spin this fiber without washing it, and that's been something that I've been playing around with and experimenting with, is spinning um, in the grease or spinning the fiber raw 
is the way I like to think of it, like without washing or without trying to remove lanolin. Because um, you can remove the dirt without removing the lanolin, which I like a lot. But um, I realized after I drum carded this that I really should have washed it first. Because when I went to spin it, it just did not want to spin easily. And I didn't, I didn't drum card a lot of it, just one, um, like, one decent sized skein worth. But, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I, I'm tempted to try and wash it in this state, which I have to be very, very careful about. Um, not to agitate it at all. Um, so I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh, so I think I'm just, for right now, I'm going to leave this alone. And I know that I will wash the rest of the fiber, um, the rest of the Rommeldale fleece. I will have to wash all of it, get some of that dirt out, and maybe, if not all of the lanolin, some of the lanolin. Um, one thing I've learned for sure is that um, not all lanolin is created equal, and... Some of it is sticky and not pleasant to spin, and some of it is silky and buttery, soft, and wonderful to spin. So sometimes it's necessary to remove all of the lanolin, like from my Coriadale fleece, um, and sometimes it's nice to leave it in. It just depends on the type of wool and, um, I guess, the type of lanolin in the wool. So um, I do have some things, some more things to show. I have some kind of like a library um, section, <laughs> some new books. Um, I didn't realize that I had this many new books, but um, I did get some for Chris, one for Christmas, one I bought around my birthday. One I don't know if I showed. I bought before my last episode, but I don't remember showing it. I might have showed it. I don't remember. And anyway, so I'm going to show off some books. And before I do that, I, before I forget, I really wanted to um, talk about a non, it's not really crafting related, but in a way it is. So I have been listening to a ton of Audible books because I like to, I don't really have time, I don't feel like I have time to read as much as I want to. And when I read, I can't knit or craft. Um, so if I read an actual physical book, but um I can listen to audiobooks. So I've been doing that more and I listen to them on the way to work and sometimes when I'm taking a shower <laughs> or when I'm spinning and I've just like been addicted to listening to audiobooks and I've been listening to a bunch of them but I really wanted to share one in particular. Um, I do love fantasy fiction. Um, I grew up with Harry Potter and I um, I love books like uh, Sabriel, um, if you know that series by Garth Nix. Um, I actually re-listened to it on Audible. Um, but there's a newer book that I wanted to share. It came out relatively recently. Um, and it's called Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Or Novik. Um, and I wanted to share it because if you like fantasy fiction, I think it's a good book. But if you, um, I'm looking at my phone too, I'm sorry. If you like, I'm trying to find the image of it. If you like um, fantasy fiction, but also it talks about, um, it talks about spinning and knitting in the story. And I love that. Um, it talked about there was like this, oh, I don't want to give it away, but here's the, um, here's what the, let's see if I can try to show you, that's what the audio book looks like. Um, the front cover of the physical book will look like this, um, Spinning Silver. I did read her first book, which is unrelated to this story, but um, both were really good. But I like this one in particular because it talks about um, spinning wool and knitting, and there are these stories and like ingrained in the book that, um, that I just thoroughly enjoyed because when do you hear people talking about knitting and spinning and spinning in particular it's just it's so rare that I felt like those parts of the book were written in just for me <laughs> um, so my fellow spinners out there I think if you like fantasy fiction I recommend it's there it goes I recommend this book um, spinning silver 
So yeah, um, on to some physical books. So I'll start with, I think, the oldest, the one I might have mentioned before. I purchased um, Knitting Gansies at a local bookstore, and I have this cute local bookstore that does have some knitting um, related and other crafting related books that they get in. Um, so here's one, uh, the, it's actually the one on the cover, whoops, it's the one on the cover, um, it's a Gansey or um, Guernsey or Jersey, I guess there's multiple ways to say, depending on what area, um, uh, different areas would call these like fishermen type sweaters. Um, one of those three names, I guess. Um, <clears throat> so the one I like a lot is the one on the cover, and I, I I'm gonna I'm not say it properly, I'm sure, but it's like Urxe, Urxke, Urxe, I don't know. It's this one. I really like that one, and I also really like Grace's cardigan. So there's Grace's cardigan, but um. This, I would, if I do make one of these, and it's kind of like dream knitting, um, the yarn is, um, I would like to buy the yarn that they recommend. See, and I'm going to say this so bad. I'm sorry, but it's going to be bad. Frangapani? 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 I don't, really don't know. Um, and it's like the traditional Guernsey um, yarn. I would like to purchase it. There is um, a store in Alaska that has a whole bunch of it. I think it's called the Net Loft. And I really wanted to place an order. I really would just actually like to buy this color right here. Um, but it's 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 pretty pricey. I'm not saying it's not worth it because I heard it wears like steel. But um, I just don't know that it's something I need to jump into right now. Plus I have enough projects. But it's kind of like a dream knitting thing. The uh, Grace's cardigan, I think, would be like if I ever wanted to make another one, I would do it after I had knitted a regular sweater because I feel like the Grace's cardigan, I don't know. Because I would want to change the placement of the buttons. I might, I don't know. I think it is knit. It's not a steaked cardigan. It's, it's a, you'll have to purl and I... Purling does tend to, a lot of purling does tend to, like, ward me off from wanting to start a project, but, so I did buy this book, and if I talked about this already, I'm sorry, I don't remember, um, but it's really pretty, and I think worth mentioning, too. It's, this is a newly revised version of an old book by Beth Brown Reinzel, Reinzel, Reinzel. Um, so then for Christmas, I got this book, um, Book of Socks by Clara Parks, and, um, there are some really beautiful socks in here. My husband picked this out for me. I didn't ask for it. He just picked it out. Um, so I marked a couple that I really like, and I think I'll just show you maybe one or two. I can see one or two that I really like the most. Um... So I really like these cabled socks right here, and these are called Bedelia, Bedelia, Bedelia. Um, I really like those. I also like these. Um, all of these names are not easy to say. <laughs> these by Nora Gone, which is R O C A I L L E. <laughs> Recale, Recale, and I guess I will show you the other pair I really like is the Kingston, the Kingston socks. But what I don't love about these is that they don't all come in all of the sizes that you might like. Some of them are only like in size medium, for example. Um, the ones by Noricon are only in size medium. Um, the Bedelia socks are in medium and large, and I think I would be closest to a large. Um, so, I don't know. These are really pretty and just something nice to have in my library, um, my crafting library. Like I said, my husband got this for me for Christmas. I would like to at least make one pair from this book, so I'll have to pick out um, 
I think those cable socks I really, really like. The Bedelia, if that's how you say it. Okay, around my birthday, well, I guess I'll show this quickly. I did purchase Knitting Patterns, the Beginner's Guide to Writing Knitting Patterns by Kate Atherley. Um, I also have a sock book by her. Um, and I bought this because I want to figure out how to write a pattern for the hat that I designed. And I kind of talked about that last time. So again, I'm going to try and keep this short and move on. But I did buy this in the hopes that eventually I will try to write a pattern. But don't hold your breath because, um, I don't know, it's just, I think it's going to take me some time to do that. And then around my birthday, went to um, went down to Manchester, um, Vermont, and um, there is a lovely bookstore there, and I don't remember the name of it. Um, and I bought this book by Arnie and Carlos, um, favorite designs, greatest hits, and new inspirations. There's a whole bunch of different stuff in here. From here's the back of the book. From their Christmas balls to stockings to Easter balls to their little birds and stuffed animals to little mouse on the Christmas balls is adorable. Um, what I really like, oh my gosh, um, Amanda from um, Mando Bug Crafts, you'll like this one. <laughs> um, she loves Halloween inspired things. I think you'll like it. Um, and what I really like in here that I would like to make, uh, like the little birds are really adorable, and this little mouse is really adorable. Um, but what I really would like to make is a pair of their slippers, their felted slippers, and I'm trying to find them now. Um, there's a brown, there's a bunch of different ones in here, but there's a brown pair with embroidered, or not embroidered, crocheted flowers on here. It is with crocheted flowers on it. I can't show it too much because it actually has the pattern in here, but um, there's one pair there brown with crocheted flowers. I wouldn't do brown just because of the dog hair in my house. It would look, it would always look terrible. I'd have to do something like a gray. Um, but I'll try and show you another pair. There's a bunch of different slippers in here. Here's a pair of black and white ones with red on the, on the uh, cuff. Um, oh, here's a nice pair too with color work. These are cute. Um, and so you knit them and then you f intentionally felt them. You like throw them in your washing machine and dryer, I guess, <laughs> to felt them. Um, and I would love to try, I would love to try, um, making those. I think they'd be really fun. And you can kind of create whatever you want to create with them. Um, like you can embroider them or embellish them and that's what they do. They just, um, they take like the base pattern and then add, um, different things to them. Like the little crocheted flowers I really like a lot and little leaves. So I think that's all I have to talk about today. And I'm only meant for this to be 20 minutes, but it ended up being way longer than that. Um, of course it always is. So I'm going to get off here. Thank you guys for watching and for coming back to my channel. Um, there are any new subscribers welcome to my channel um, and of course um, I don't usually do that whole like intro that a lot of people do but I do appreciate you guys who come back and have been around and stuck with me um, some of you have been around since I started this as just a sewing channel and thought of it more of a as a vlog than a podcast but back in 2015 or 16 I don't remember um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for um, watching. I'll see you next time. I'll try to maybe do some shorter, more frequent episodes so that um, you don't have to wait four months for my next one. But um, no promises. So, <laughs> all right. Bye, guys.